spontaneous round of applause if you were asked to do it. Silly, silly. Uh, but I was only asked a few uh, hours ago if I wanted to do this gig, you know, to support the occupation, and I went, not really. Uh, I'm no proof I was against the invasion in the first place. I don't think we belong in Iraq. Um, then he explained it wasn't that occupation. And I went, mm, mm, I'll try to get out of it, essentially. He went, uh, I'll do it under certain, only if I can have the backdrop of my choosing. Uh, I want a marker pen drawing of René Descartes or I'm walking. <laughs> Fucking did it. Um, <laughs> or Robin Gibb, might be him, I don't know. <laughs> Tax the future before it's happened, right? You, can't, um, you know what I mean? You just, why? Which are these children, or as yet unborn children, who are responsible for the banking crisis and for some reason have to bail people who'll be dead by the time they're around out? It makes no fucking sense. That, and we have been the entire media way that the banking crisis was covered was just, uh, you wouldn't understand, I'm wearing a tie and give me your money. That was a tiny... <laughs> and I never got it, and they're trying to make it angry at other things. Even the, uh, even the politicians' expenses thing, right, which was a bit annoying. We were fucked over twice, right? But one was, that, the politicians' expenses, just in fucking terms of number of pounds, was a light fingering by the bins compared to the absolute prison-style melee of... <laughs> I'm improvising this. Um, <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Like, these people, but it's easier to understand right? because I know what a wooden spoon is and I don't think I should have to buy one for an MP. But I don't really know what a toxic acid is. So fuck you with your wooden spoon. Right? I don't know. I don't really understand what happened with the subprime mortgages or even what subprime means. But I know what a duck is and I know what an island is and I can pretty much guess what a duck island probably is. And this Tory cunt's not getting one on my one. But these guys fucked us so much more, but it's just so hard to... I wish, I wish the banks had spent our money on something we could all see, that we could get behind, just a symbol. If you switch on your TV and it went, Hello, today, Royal Bank of Scotland and HSBC uh, completed the final stages in the building of the immense middle finger on the moon. And will now shine down on you forever to remind you just how the New World Order is treating you. Thank you very much. That would have been good. <laughs> And then we had a protest vote. We don't do protest votes that well in this country. We do a protest vote and we got the BNP into the European Parliament. Brilliant. Well done. Well done. I don't think anyone here could spot any medium or long-term problem with getting a racist to represent you at the international level. I think so. Oh, if I thought that was a good idea, I would be a proud supporter of the royal family. But I'm not. <laughs> Fuck the royal wedding. And I'm just really, are we going to have to hear about that for a long time? That Tory MP about this, the royal wedding, I just think this is going to just encourage those parasites to breed. <laughs> That's great. That's easy applause with points on semi jokes now. Um, I don't know. And well done, by the way, to the man who's got a bottle of wine. That's fucking lovely about it. Yes, it's that time of night where we are. <laughs> this feels like the very kind of low key bit just before the orgy. Everyone who put their hand up and they'll go, oh yeah, who's in for the. Occupation. <laughs> Fuck fest. Yeah, oh yeah. It's a, this is going to be a sticky floor in a few hours. Oh. <laughs> Alright, don't pull out. Um, <laughs> applause, but oh, we won't, we won't. Uh, stay and I'm fucking occupying whatever hole I'm in. <laughs> yeah, let's do it. Fucking let's, let's, let's occupy this place until they abandon the spending cuts on education and let's keep doing it. Let's keep occupying until we have. Fucking multilateral union, you know, nuclear disarmament. Keep occupying until, until marriage to a horse is not frowned upon in this country. It's my own personal bugbear. Uh, I just love him. I, I have material prepared, but it's all out of my head. I'm just bullshitting. Um, I need a drink, man. I'm, n I'm never normally sober at this time of night. That's why I'm fucking impressed by all of you as students. And when I was your, oh, when I was a student. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> You're just fine. <laughs> <laughs> Taunting me. <laughs> and, oh, and I'm, 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 oh, you are. Oh, very nice of you. Um, well, screw it. Yeah. <laughs> My drinks acceptance on stage. <laughs> I know. <laughs> oh, 
that you don't know me at all if you didn't think I'd have said that. <laughs> Beautiful. This is better, isn't it? It's a better thing to gesticulate with. You can, wine on stage doesn't work in a wine glass. It's just, you can't go, add another thing! Because without people go, simply, Oscar, you're the wittiest man ever, isn't it? <laughs> Thank you very much. Round of applause, that one. Genuinely, it's awful now. It's got so cold now that you can't drink outdoors without people seeing that you have a problem. I don't like that. I prefer the summer, right? Because you don't, give me a cheer if you had a drink outdoors this summer. Right, because you're allowed to, right? That's the rules when there's not a cloud in the sky. All that separates us from the homeless is choice of location. It's wonderful, right? And rule number two is when you take a single item of food, that is technically a picnic. <laughs> you're not an alcoholic if you're also carrying cheese. That is my rule. <laughs> well, if we're for a picnic, yeah, what are we having? 80 cans of Stella and a baguette. How <laughs> continental. <laughs> it's wonderful. And they changed the rules, though. I mean, you're of a generation now, many of you, that, that may not be aware. Cider wasn't always acceptable. And the way it is now, it's not that long ago, right? Cider, if you're drinking cider, especially outdoors, you might as well be wanking at the traffic while you're out there, right? Cider used to be a proper red-faced maniac drink. Right? The, the sort of man who just lives in a car park in his dressing gown and all he has is a big bottle of cider and a pram full of shoes. Okay. What's wrong with that man, Mummy? He's a character, son. <laughs> and now suddenly, it's made in the marketing, right? The effect marketing has. And you realise when you add some demo and then you see your demo on the new event. You know, you've all been on a demo right away, you're pretty sure it's about 200,000 people. You see, four people yesterday. <laughs> That's the thing, right? The media has so much influence, and they do it over everything we take into our body, right? Cider. Now, thanks to Magnus and Bulmers and a few years of advertising, it's just one of your five a day. <laughs> Lovely, friendly, Irish summery drink. Have a cider in a tree house with your friends. Go on. Give it to the children. It's basically fruit. <laughs> My favourite example is Lucasade. I don't know if you, any of you uh, spotted the change with Lucasade into what it now is, which is apparently a sports drink. That's changed in my lifetime. When I was a kid, the only time you ever saw Lucasade was day three of an illness that might kill you. Yeah. You're the same, right? And I wonder if it's generational. It's not, though, apparently. I, I'd never heard of Lucasade until the first time I nearly didn't make it through a fever. You know, that proper fever where you don't know what's going to happen. Because you're, ah. you're a kid and you don't know what being sick is. You're mother, mother, I ail. What is wrong? Ah. I'm weak now. Why? Hot and cold at the same time. And then she arrives your mum on day three with a magic, glowing, orange, radioactive bottle. And she goes, here, drink this. It's for kids who are nearly dead. <laughs> what is it? It's Lucasaid. <laughs> What's it made of? Nobody knows. <laughs> Why is the bottle sticky even though it's not open yet? <laughs> Anyone? No one has ever explained that to my satisfaction. Sealed glass vessel, this shit can get out of it. Like the creature's blooded alien. What's it made of? Nanobots? For God's sake. I'll stick the booze, thank you very much. I have one of those weeks, do you ever have a week when you think you're drinking too much and then you, you start getting worried and then you look back and you count it up and you realise you're just now you're impressed? <laughs> you all seem quite right on, but you recycle, right? It's a dangerous thing recycling if you drink a lot. Because that bin becomes a beacon of guilt. <laughs> you look at it and they go, that's not right. Uh, I emptied that yesterday. I sometimes want to write a note on it for the bin man. Like, Don't you judge me. I know what this looks like, but you've never been in the house. For all you know, 80 people live here. Uh, I remember this the other week. Uh, basically, day one, all right, me and my girlfriend found out she's pregnant. Right, what you've just done there is what I did. <laughs> and waited too long before committing to a reaction. Because <laughs> you weren't expecting it, she just, I'm like, pregnant, I'm like, oh, I need a drink. Wait, I didn't say that, I just thought it, and then I went, no, don't say it, say something else. And then I thought, what should I say? Are you sure? You can't, you can't do that, right? Um, congratulations, that's wrong as well, isn't it? That's, you went, oh, I, you know. And finally, it strikes me that while I've been thinking of the right thing to say, real time is ticking away. So what's happened in the real world? She's just gone, I'm pregnant, and I've just gone. <laughs> Champagne! That's the only word in the English language that will break attention on it. Champagne! She can't say it in a damn room, Champagne. Champagne! 
I couldn't think of anything else to say until for two hours I'd go, Champagne! 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 You still got some? Champagne! Are you okay? Champagne! I'd wake up day two. Champagne! Day three. We can't afford any more champagne! Day four. Why? Day five. Nucasade! Day six. Vinegar! Uh, Calpol! And just a week, just caving it. Both of us. <laughs> Didn't work either, we're going to have to get a proper abortion. <laughs> That's quite a dark joke to do, quite so late in the day. It's just, go right, sickos, yeah, applaud it if you want. It's just a joke, relax if that, but yeah, it's, she's not even really pregnant. <laughs> I saw to that. <laughs> she thought, hey, quite apart from how much it would cost to send them to school, I don't want kids now, man. I'm genuinely, and people don't believe you to say that off the bat. Like, I don't want kids. People are like, there's probably something wrong with his balls. <laughs> Other people's kids get to piss me off when I do this job. Yeah, that's when a kid did that. <laughs> it's the parents, the right parents, some, some of them feel the need to try and censor the world around them. And stand-up comedy is one of the last bastions of genuine free speech. And right into anything I like right now. I might never be invited back, but I'm allowed to. No one censors you. But parents sometimes in the audience, Oi, mate, don't do that joke, I've got kids. It's like the ultimate excuse. What are you talking about? I've got kids. Pedophile joke. You did a pedophile joke. I've got kids. But they're not here. <laughs> yeah, but I've got them. <laughs> well, don't go home and tell them the pedo joke. <laughs> I'll go in a minute. It's very soon. I don't know. Uh, I'd give it a while, you know. If I had kids, I'd do uh, Because your friends, when they have kids, they want you to try. I'll give it a go. Give it a go. I've had people say that. Just give it a try. <laughs> that, what? How? That's not legal. That's like a cooling off period. Oh, yeah. First five years of a baby. No obligation. Look, if I could do that, I would. But I, I reckon after three years, I'd be like this. Well, and you? Giving this our best shot, haven't we? <laughs> You're just not for us. Come on. <laughs> Off we go down the bottom of the garden. <laughs> I know it's cold. <laughs> you know, it's funny, to be honest, I'm not even sure which colour bin I'm meant to leave you in. <laughs> See you there on the newspapers, alright. The council will be here in the morning. <laughs> Happy birthday. <laughs> Listen, uh, I want to leave you with inspiring words, but I don't really have any. You're far more inspirational to me. Fucking keep it up. Thank you so much for being here. It's been a pleasure. Thank you very much indeed. Cheers. <laughs>